Coming up on episode 88 of Creative Writing, I'm talking about how email will save your soul. Just kidding, I'm not talking about that, but I am talking about email. I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have cut me up again tonight. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing, the podcast for writers, bloggers, and creatives where I make really terrible jokes as I introduce my own podcast. (laughs) Actually, this is, well, it may be that, but it's also the podcast for writers, bloggers, and creatives who want to build an online platform without being smarmy. And I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant, and I'm glad that you are here on this Monday or whatever day of the week you are listening. As I record this, it's almost midnight on Sunday the night before. And I have been, I could say Super Bowling, but I have not been Super Bowling. I have been, my Super Bowl was like wrestling kids to bed. I think I won, but it was definitely, there was overtime. It was overtime tonight. So uh, here we are. And I am in the middle of launching my course, Own Your List. Now this is my signature course and it's just been totally revamped and I'm very excited about it, but I didn't want to do like a big sales push necessarily in my podcast, because that's just weird. And you also might be listening to this in March when the course is not open. So I wanted to talk about email. And I had some suggestions, which I think I'm going to get back to another time about segmenting from Christine. And uh, I think that was a great question. So we may talk about targeting and segmenting in another episode. But as I was writing the sales copy for the emails, I kind of came up with, I guess, what I wanted to talk about for today. And that has to do with monetizing your list and also kind of why email is so important to me and what it's done. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. Uh, I was writing a sales copy for the, it's actually what I did is this past week, if you're on my list, you already know what I did. But if you're not, uh, I sent out five videos that were actually from behind the paywall of the course. So five videos for free, one from each section of the course. And so I talked a little bit about each one. And when I got to the monetization video, I wanted to kind of share about monetization and sort of my journey with how email has affected monetization. And so in the first email, I started a story and I always think it's fun to do, you know, start a story in one email and then finish it in another. So that was my plan. And I planned to write about how Well, I started. So the first email, I talked about how I failed at five businesses. And I think I've talked about this, but it's been a long time. So when my husband and I first got married, I actually couldn't find a job. I got out of college with an English degree and had worked in a church for a couple of years. And then I worked for a tutoring company briefly right before we got married. I was teaching first grade. And let me just tell you, I'm not a good elementary school teacher. Just let's throw that out there. Uh, So we got married and I moved back to Houston and I could not find a job to save my life. And I really was sort of not sure what I wanted to do. And I wasn't blogging. I wish I had been blogging and writing books back then, but the world looked really different in 2003. It was not so friendly to indie writers as it is today. And it just wasn't even a thought that crossed my mind to be writing. Anyway, I didn't know what I was doing. So I started a business painting children's furniture, which sounds really out there, but I also like to do painting and I almost double majored in art in college. And anyway, that's, I had a lot of nieces and nephews. I started painting things for them and then their friends started asking. And then I got really excited and decided to make it into a business and ended up, let's see, like a year later, closing the doors on that and ending up, I still have like pieces of this painted furniture in my house that I can't seem to part with, but I don't want... Uh, and I painted a bunch of murals. I painted like five or six YMCAs and I didn't price check and I should have, because I think that the murals I charged like 1200 maybe, and they should have been like 10,000. So yeah, that happened. I'm not great at business. So I, I realized pretty quickly that I was not good at getting people to pay what the things I made were worth. So I priced according to high end hand painted furniture because that's what it was. It takes forever. And unless you're buying 500 tables, you're kind of just paying retail prices. So that sucked. And it was really hard to make any kind of profit. And uh, I knew what people should be paying. And I was in the right markets, but it was like, I 
couldn't get people to buy. So that was really frustrating. So we closed the doors on that. I didn't like the sales aspect of it. I ended up with a lot of extra furniture. Then I tried a slew of other things. I went to grad school. Okay, so that was great. Um, And I did some teaching there. I taught composition for a year at University of North Carolina at Greensboro, worked in financial aid and actually learned how to use InDesign, which was fantastic. And then, uh, you know, we started having kids and I I just did some kind of side businesses. I did Mary Kay and ended up like donating, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 or more dollars worth of product to a local women's shelter a couple months later when I realized I just hated doing sales of that. And P.S. I'm not a huge makeup person, but I do love skincare, which will come back around. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have in that email that I failed at. So I did that. Uh, I started selling essential oils and I think I sold two. I still buy them, but I don't believe in them enough to be a good salesperson for them, I guess. Uh, And then I joined up Rodan and Fields and another skincare company. Still love their products, but Again, I, you know, when we did our tax return, I guess last year, I was like, hey, look how much money I spent and did not make at all any money. (laughs) Didn't even break even, just bought a lot of skincare. So my husband actually banned me from, I feel like there's one more in there, but he banned me from direct sales. So no more direct sales. But the problem with all of these is that I was apologetic about prices Because, you know, the skincare, Mary Kay and Ridden Fields are kind of high end, right? They're more than you'll pay at a drugstore. Now the products are better, but still you're paying more. So I was kind of apologetic about the prices. I'm kind of a bargain shopper. So it was really hard for me to sell these things, even if they're worth it. Uh, I don't like being salesy. And I don't want to be that kind of person where your friends are afraid to answer the phone because you might be calling to talk or you might be calling to sell them something or ask if you'll host a party. So I didn't want to do that. So once I kind of ran out of my, you know, asking my friends and they weren't interested, I was like, well, I guess I've hit a dead end. I don't know what else to do. And I thought for things like the essential oils, my platform of the blog and social media would really help. And it didn't so much. And I was kind of surprised by that. So I was making some money kind of all along throughout these periods with sponsored posts and ads on my site. And as the site got bigger, I started making more, but I really just didn't like the feel for that. So I stepped back from, I do have ads on my site on kirstenoliphant.com, but I stopped doing sponsored posts almost exclusively. Every now and then I might do something, but for the most part, I just don't, I don't even look to see what offer. I'm in part of a couple of networks. I don't even look to see what they offer. And yeah, I'm just not interested in that right now. So it it just felt yucky. I didn't like it. I didn't like that method of monetization as a full as a as a big method. So when I started creative writing, I didn't necessarily think I was doing it to make a ton of money, but I thought that it would be a great way to start a podcast and a site doing things that I'm really interested in, but also, you know, there's the potential for for teaching of some kind. I hadn't really thought about courses. I thought more about coaching and I've done some of that one-on-one. But It was a really good fit for me because, again, I like teaching. It's something I've done for years off and on. First graders, not so much, but um, I've done, uh, you know, I did youth ministry for years and did a whole lot of teaching, like on a weekly basis to smaller and larger groups, a lot of speaking. And then also I did uh, teach at the college level. I did some subbing and other things. So a lot of teaching in my background. And content creation is a good fit for me because I love creating content, whether it's podcast episodes or blog posts or eBooks or longer books. That's just a lot of fun for me. So I enjoy it. So I wrote the email where I talked about how I failed at these businesses and then said, Hey, (laughs) tomorrow's email is going to tell you the full story. And if you've already read your email, if you're subscribed, you've seen this next email, uh, which was a little scary to send. So I kept trying to write the second email and I was going to talk about what changed and how, you know, I can now teach about monetization, whereas before I really sucked at it. (laughs) And I sat down to write this email and I kept writing it and I kept writing it. I kept deleting it and I kept writing it and I kept deleting it. And I couldn't figure out what the problem was because you know, it it was my story. It was supposed to be my transformation story. It was supposed to have to do with email because again, I'm trying to talk about my email course and it's true. Like I'm not making it up. And so I was trying to figure out why I was struggling so hard over this, but I felt like I kind of pinpointed what it was. And it ended up that really what I felt like was 
my innate sense of story and kind of the understanding that I have sort of subconsciously of copywriting kept kind of taking over in a way that I didn't like. Now, I don't think I'm the best copywriter, but I've learned to write copy in a way that feels comfortable to me. And I feel like it started to become too comfortable. And it was like I was, I knew what needed to come next. And so it was almost like I was trying to fit my story into the box of what needed to come next. Like I was trying to tie it up with this neat bow and make this beautiful transformation story that would get everybody buying my course. And while I have had some transformation, while email has had a huge impact on my business, it just, what I was writing, it was like I was writing what I was supposed to write, what was supposed to come next. And it was true-ish, like I wasn't lying, but it just, it felt like I was shoving something into the wrong shaped box, right? So I stopped and I wrote a very honest email (laughs) uh, that basically said that, like, hey, I felt like it was getting icky. Like I was just writing sales copy and it was not what I needed to write. So I did talk about what changed and what didn't change because some things haven't changed. So let me talk about what has not changed, okay, since I've started creative writing and since I've really kind of focused and and had what I like to call the list building mindset versus, you know, maybe like a traffic mindset or a numbers mindset where you're trying to gain followers. So here's what hasn't changed. I still am not super comfortable with sales, okay? I still don't want to be like a sales evangelist. Like one of the things I didn't like about selling skincare was I felt like I went to some training things and I felt like I was supposed to be an evangelist for skincare. I love skincare. I love Rodana Fields. I really liked Mary Kay as well, but I didn't want to be like an evangelist. Like I didn't want to have to find places and conversations where I could talk about skincare. It just felt icky to me and not natural at all. That's still true. So I still... That, that has not changed at all. Okay. Email has not changed my life in that way. <laughs> um, I still have failures and get frustrated. I still am trying to grow. I've had frustrations in this launch even. Um, I've had frustrations just all along in my business. I feel like I have highs and lows. And some weeks I think this is great. It's really a, such a good fit for me. I love what I'm doing. And then other weeks I think I love what I'm doing, but I hate this this piece where I feel like I'm failing at, at you know, I'm not making what I want to make, or maybe it's just that I have somebody complain about something or, you know, whatever it is, you take your pick. There's all kinds of highs and lows with, with kind of running an online business, but uh, the lows really bring me down sometimes. And so that hasn't changed. And I still sometimes feel apologetic about prices. I still struggle with saying, yep, this is how much something costs and not saying, if somebody's like, that seems expensive, not being like, yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> I struggle with saying, no, this is valuable because I have taken a lot of online courses and I could say that my course at 197 is super valuable. It is. And I do think it's worth it. So those things haven't really changed. So what did change? Because that, that was the whole point of my email. And this is why I was struggling because I was like, I said I was going to tell you what changed, but a lot of things have not changed. So what did change is this. I am now doing something that I love, which is the content creation bit. I'm teaching. I'm sharing things that I have learned with people, sharing methods and helping other people get places they want to go. So I love that. So it's it to me, it's something I'm much more passionate about than, say, skincare or even hand-painted children's furniture, which my furniture was really nice, you guys. So I care way more about what I'm doing now, and I feel more passionate about it. So that that's important, but it's still hard for me. Um, So the thing that has changed the most, I think, since having this list building mindset is the vehicle. So when I was selling other things before or trying to run online businesses, I was stuck either going to, you know, with the furniture, brick and mortar stores, or I was trying to get into like these little craft shows where you have to pay. And then it's strangers who've never seen your stuff. They're seeing it for the first time. And kind of in a similar way, when I was selling you know, other products, I was having to reach out to uh, people that I already knew and kind of exhausting all these dead in- these ends. And when they were done, like if none of my Facebook friends wanted to have a party or do whatever, then I was just kind of sunk. I mean, you could just keep posting every day. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I know that that's a thing that happens. And I still post about my blog and share posts from that every day. But it felt like at some point I had exhausted all my resources and there was nothing left to do. Whereas list building, 
here's the difference. When I'm building my list and trying to get people on my list, my goal is not to have thousands and thousands and thousands. I would, it's hard to say. I'm, I was thinking about this the other day. What would my ultimate goal be? Like, is there a, a cap on how many people I'd want on my list? And honestly, like, I think it would be weird for me if I had more than five to 10,000 people total on my list. Because I feel like I would lose the sense of intimacy. And I already have thousands on my list, you know, and it still feels intimate. Not all of them reply, not all of them open, but I have a decent open rate. And and like today, I spend a good portion of the day responding to emails. I do have people responding. I do have this sense of relationship to some degree. And I don't know how much that would change if I had, you know, 10,000 people on my email list. I guess it depends how many would respond. Uh, But I feel like I would always be wanting to cut it and cut it and cut it and get down the people who aren't opening and aren't replying or responding. Um, But when I change to this list building mindset, it kind of, you know, I'm trying to get people who really want to be on my list, the targeted people who are here for me, they really love my style because let's face it, my style isn't for everybody. If you're listening, it probably is your style. Or if you're a first time listener, maybe you're trying to decide if it's your style. Maybe there's another podcast host talking about something similar and you're more their style. We all aren't the same and we don't all learn in the same ways. We don't all learn from the same kinds of people. And so I want to build the kind of list of people who are here for me, the kind of style that I have, the methodology, the values that I have, and the products that I have. And so when I'm building a list like that, I'm constantly growing. So it's not like Facebook, like where my Facebook friends, it was like a dead end when I when they'd all heard about Mary Kay and didn't want it. Um, and there was that dead end and then they just got tired of hearing about it. Whereas when I'm growing a targeted list, I'm constantly bringing in new people who are the right kind of people. And if they're not, hopefully they'll leave my list. And then when I have products to sell, I have a targeted list of people. So email makes it a little bit different than going into like a cold call into a store where I'm like, hey, here's a table and chair set that's really cute, but you've never heard of me. You've never seen this before. You don't know if you can sell it. Do you want it? Um, Really different kind of thing than taking something before a group of people that I already know are interested in the topic. They already like my style. Or if I'm doing an affiliate sale, I vet those pretty heavily. I don't just do them willy nilly. I do them if I jive with that person. If I think you guys, my readers and listeners would jive with that person. And so there's a better chance that you're actually interested. Does that mean every person's going to buy every single thing I try to sell? No, that would be crazy. Now, if any of you guys do, and you're my super fans who just are like, I'm going to buy whatever, that's awesome. And that's great. But that's, that's not how it typically works. Typically, you'll have an offer and it speaks to some people and not everybody. And that's okay. So when I changed to having a list building mindset, a lot of things really didn't change. But what changed is that I have a better vehicle. I have a constantly growing vehicle, a constantly growing list of people who are interested in what I am sharing with them. I'm providing them free value most of the time. And every now and then I'll have some kind of promotion. And sometimes it's mixed in. I do a lot of free things and I have some paid things as well. I don't care if people just sit on my list and do free things all the time. That's great. I'm not tracking it down and looking looking at my subscribers list thinking, these three people have never bought anything from me before. That's not my style. Um, And also that would just take too much time. (laughs) So what really changed for me is the vehicle. It changed because I was selling something I was more passionate about, which is my products and also affiliate things that I feel really strongly about. But I'm using a vehicle that actually allows me to have a closer relationship with my readers. It's Email is just this way of being more personal, more intimate, more one-to-one. I like to say, we all know that email is one-to-many, like I'm emailing and it's going out to thousands of you, but when it hits your inbox, it feels one-to-one. And there's something really special about that. So email is still hard work. Email is not a magic pill. If you buy my course, you're not going to suddenly know how to do everything because the reality is I'm going to share ways that you can monetize, but some of the best ways you're going to be monetizing are building courses and products or being an affiliate for other programs. And if that's not interesting to you, I would say that's the top moneymaker. So it's not going to be magic. Now, email could also be great for driving traffic because if you think about it, you're building your list of super fans, the people who want to hear about what you're doing. And so if you're emailing them with like, here's the link to my blog post, 
and writing it in a way that's a lot more interesting than what I just said, (laughs) then you're going to have people clicking over to your blog and bringing you page views. So if that's your method of monetization, sponsored posts and ads where it depends more on traffic, email is good for you too, but it's not a magic pill. It's still a lot of hard work. I have had a lot of changes and finally for the first time in a business, I'm in the black. And it's a great feeling because I love what I do and I don't feel gross about it. I don't feel like I'm a you know, evangelist for skincare. I'm, if anything, an evangelist for helping people grow and kind of embrace their gifts. And that feels great. And so it's a lot easier for me to do it. And then using email, I'm like, I feel a lot more comfortable because it's a vehicle that allows me to have that relationship. So I feel like I'm kind of circling back and saying the same things again. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. But I wanted to share this because it, it was a really scary thing to send out the email that I sent out this morning where I kind of bared my heart about this. Like, hey, I was trying to write this and then it felt like I was just trying to write sales copies or here's the real truth behind it. But I do feel passionate about email. Everything has changed for me when I started having a list building mindset versus a traffic or numbers game kind of mindset. Everything has changed. Is email magical? Is it a formula that's gonna just make everything explode and be perfect in your life and business? No, I don't believe in formulas. But my course is going to give best practices to help you see how email can be that same vehicle for you. And I feel like it's a whole lot more permanent than trusting in anything that has an algorithm. So with that being said, I still have some free videos up for you guys to watch. Depending on when you're listening, the course might be closed, but I'll have the videos up for you. Uh, You can go and register with your email to watch all five videos, which are direct Lee from behind the paywall of Own Your List, my course um, offering for free. Obviously, there's a lot more videos behind the paywall, but it's one from each module to give you a taste to see if it's a good fit for you. And if it's not a good fit for you, hey, you just got some free videos. So win, 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 win. And you can find those if you go to creativewriting.com forward slash workshop. If you want to subscribe and make sure you're not missing anything, You can go to creativewriting.com forward slash subscribe to get on my weekly list. And hey, every Friday now, you're going to be getting a shorter bite-sized episode called The Quick Fix, which comes through email as well, but you'll be able to hear it. So if you're listening right now, just check the feed because it's going to be before and after this episode that you'll see The Quick Fix episodes with links and resources where I talk about what's going on and what I'm excited about and what I've been reading. I'm thankful to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the music for this show. Once again, I really want you guys to check out this course that I've created, check out the free videos, if nothing else to get free training. But if you know that this is for you, if you know that you're tired of depending on things that have algorithms and chasing numbers and trying to just get traffic and never capturing readers, never getting that real relationship with them, just check out the course. You can get that taste for it if you go to creativewriting.com forward slash workshop. I will see you again in your earbuds and your inbox on Friday, and I hope you have an inspired week. I